neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house she enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Just an overview, here we have uh, Jesus calling his 12 disciples to him, and he gives into these 12 disciples uh, power. He gives them a gift, power and authority to go out and fulfill the Great Commission and preach the kingdom of God. And in verse 6 tells us that they got the commission and they were obedient and they went out and fulfilled that, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere as the Lord had commanded. Let's turn to verse 55. A stark contrast. Something definitely has gone wrong within a matter of 36 verses or so when we read Jesus, but he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit ye are. Jesus rebuked them. Within the same chapter, they've gone from being what we would consider faithful servants, successfully fulfilling the mission that God has placed on their life, to about 36 verses later, Jesus is rebuking them for having a wrong spirit or having a wrong manner of spirit about them. You know, we have been taught, and many of you know, that the church is called the Bride of Christ. And I've titled this message, The First Gift Jesus Gave the Church. Now, that is very debatable, so to speak, but I'm not necessarily one for the debate on when the church started. The church was started with Jesus Christ. And here we have uh, the first gift that Jesus gives his church. And you say, why do you say it's the first gift? Well... All the way back in Mark, you don't have to turn there, chapter 3 and about verse 13, you have Jesus giving this, this same portion of scripture, Jesus giving these same gifts, or a, a group of gifts, I think they're combined, they're almost one and the same, so to speak, Jesus gave the church the power and authority, and the church is the bride of Christ, this is kind of like a wedding ring, a husband gives the a wife, a wedding ring or an engagement ring to authenticate his desires to marry her and to have her as his own. And in so much the same way, that would be the power or the, uh, the, the, the proof of his desires. And then the authority, that would be somewhat the same way that a woman takes the name of her husband or the last name of her husband you see, Jesus called these 12 disciples the, a picture of the, uh, of the church, or the church, in fact, 12 disciples. And you know, the reason it's debatable, and the reason I don't necessarily debate the, the fact that the church was started before Acts 2 is because you can't have a treasure without having a church. You can't commission people to preach the word of God without having the power and the authority of God. That's why I say that this is the first gift that Jesus gave the church. He gave them power and authority. He gave them the power and the ability to fulfill his desire to preach the kingdom of God. And he gave them the authority. He gave them uh, his name the authority that was attached to his name. It's like as we call ourselves today Christians. We hold the name of Christ. Power and authority. The first gifts Jesus gave the church. What a dramatic change. What a process of events when we go to verse 55 and it tells us that Jesus rebuked them and said, ye know not what manner of spirit ye are. You know, these are his own disciples. They had been following him. They had been uh, hanging on every word that had come out of the mouth of Jesus Christ for nearly two years. And he comes to the place where he rebukes them, rebukes them, 
and literally chastises them for the manner of spirit that they were going about to, to do the work. You know, simply put, I'd like to just show you a couple of red flags in this chapter that we could learn from, that we could glean from, that would help us uh, to keep the right spirit about us as we go forward in each individual's ministry serving the Lord. It's very important that we're found faithful, and part of faithful is being found successful. The last thing I want is me or any one of you to be on the end of a 